Hello students, welcome to your business studies class. So today we will be discussing the dividend decision which is the third decision under the financial decision. Financial decision. So we know that there are three decisions that a financial manager has to take. Out of these three decisions we had already discussed about the investment decision that is where to invest and the financing decision that means from where to procure or raise the funds either from debt or equity. Now we will be discussing about the dividend decision which is the third decision. Now the dividend decision. So before discussing about the dividend, uh, dividend decisions we should be aware of the two important terms that are there under the dis, uh, dividend decision are the dividends and the retained earnings. So what are dividends basically? So dividends are the portion of divisible profit that is distributed to the owners that is the shareholders. So as the dividends are the portion of the profits so obviously the dividends are given only when the company has earned profit. This we all know that shareholders get their return only when the company has earned profit not in the cases of loss so dividends are the portion of divisible profit which is distributed to the owners that is the shareholders so these are the result uh, result of current income for the shareholders what are retained earnings this we had studied in class 11th also that retained earnings are the proportion of profits which are kept in that is reinvested in the business for the purpose of business growth business expansion or reinvestment now this uh, dividend decision is basically to decide whether to distribute earnings of shareholders as dividend or retained earnings to finance long-term profits of the firm. How much amount is to be distributed as a dividends to the shareholder? How much amount is to be kept aside as retained earning? This is what we are going to discuss or decide in this particular decision that is the dividend decision. So this must be done keeping in mind the firm's overall objective of maximizing the shareholders wealth as we know that the objective of financial management is what is to maximize the shareholders wealth. See students we cannot or we can say that the company cannot just randomly decide that in this year we are going to give this much dividend this year we are going to keep this much as a retained earnings. There are a few factors that they need to keep in mind before deciding about the dividends and the retained earnings because if they have given more dividends then they may not uh, they may are not keeping the amount for the future growth which is also important if they have if they are keeping a large amount as a retained earnings so this may uh, not look good to the shareholders because for shareholders the dividends are the returns so they may be not happy with the uh, decision of keeping so much amount of uh, am amount of profit as a retained earnings so they may start disinvesting their interest from the company so therefore this decision needs to be taken very carefully by the company that how much amount is to be distributed as dividend and how much amount is to be kept in as a retained earning. So for that there are few factors that we will be discussing. Now let's discuss the factors affecting the dividend decision. The very first factor is the amount of earnings. So as we know that dividends can only be paid out of the current earnings or the accumulated profits. So if the firm has earnings they can have higher payout ratio but if the firm is not having any earnings so they should be having more of retained earning than the dividend uh, than distributing the dividends next is the stability of earnings now the company is earning but there should be a stability in the earnings of the company so if earnings are stable high payout ratio that is the greater proportion of the earnings can be given as a dividend Company with unstable earnings gives smaller dividends and keeps more as a retained earnings. Then there should be a stability of dividends. So many companies follow the policy of stabilizing dividend per share and they do not alter such uh, dividend such ratio if it is if it increase in the earning as temporary of a small amount. So dividend per share is not altered if change in earning is temporary. Then the growth opportunities. If the companies are having growth opportunities, then they would be retaining more and paying less dividends. But company with no growth plans pay higher dividends to their shareholders provided they have enough cash to meet their uh, operational activities. 
Next is the cash flow position of the company. So if the company is having surplus cash, the company may declare higher dividends. But in the case of shortage of cash, the company may declare no or very low dividend and they may go for more retained earnings. Then we have to keep in mind the shareholders preferences also. So if the majority of the shareholders prefer current dividends, that whatever the current earning is, they want dividends on the basis of that. So in that case, a company can have a high payout. But if most shareholders want the company to grow by reinvesting its earning and give them a capital gain in terms of an increase in the market price of shares, so they have a low payout ratio and more of the retained earnings. Then taxation policy also helps in deciding that how much amount is to be given as a dividend. So depends on the taxation policy of the government. Dividend income is tax free for the shareholders, but the company has to pay taxes on dividend paid to the shareholders. So if the tax rate is higher, company may prefer to pay less dividends. But if the tax rate on dividend is lower, the company may declare higher dividends. Next is the stock market reaction. So the declaration of dividends has a positive impact on the goodwill of the firm in the market and it will also increase the market price of the shares and vice versa. So the company always should keep in mind the effect on the market price that if they are not declaring good dividends, so it may affect, it may have a negative effect on the market price of the shares. But if the company is declaring good dividends, so it will have a good impact on the goodwill and people will start buying the shares of that particular company, which will uh, help in increasing the market price of the shares. Then access to the capital market. Large and reputed companies have easy access to the capital market. So therefore, they do not have to keep much amount as a retained earning as when, whenever they require fund, they can easily raise it from the capital market. Whereas smaller companies do not have such access to the capital market. So they have to focus more on the retained earnings. So if it is difficult to raise funds, firm should have a low payout ratio, retain funds so that it can generate funds internally. Then the legal constraints. Before declaring any dividends, the provision of the company's act that place restriction of dividends have to be adhered to. And the contractual constraint says that suppose if the company has entered into a contract with any of the financial institution to raise funds, the company cannot violate the terms of the loan agreement in this regard. Sometimes this financial institutions keep certain clauses that they that the company cannot declare uh, dividends from a certain ratio, higher than certain ratio. So the company has to follow such uh, such agreements has to follow such clauses if they have entered into a contract with any of the financial institutions <laughs>